Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today we'll be taking a closer look at the Su-100. This is the tier 6 Soviet tank destroyer located right here after the Su-85 and after the Su-100 you can decide whether you want to go down to the Object 268 or to the Object 263 which are both very powerful machines and that's why the Su-100 is quite an important tank destroyer because it's the last machine in the Soviet TD tree that you have to play to get either of these two tank destroyers after that the lines divide and i personally am playing the sc100 to get the object 263 especially after patch 8.11 now that nerfed the object 268 quite a bit and the object 263 remained untouched so that's the reason why i'm aiming for this tank here and the SD100 is a really, really powerful machine and I had quite a blast of a time driving it. It can cause massive destruction but playing this tank and mastering it can be very difficult because its stats are quite controversial. Talking of stats, let's have a look at them. First of all, it gets 580 hit points. That's literally nothing. Even for a tank destroyer at tier 6, that's really, really little health. Now at tier 6, this hit point pool will allow you to take 3 hits and after that you'll go down. That is really low health. The machine is quite light, weighing 32 tons. I mean, it's not as light as some tank destroyers. For example, you're heavier than the Yak Panzer IV. You can ram some tanks at tier 6 because at tier 6 many vehicles, especially medium and light tanks, are quite light still. So yeah, 32 tons is quite a decent weight actually. Driving those 32 tons is a 520 horsepower engine. That's quite good actually, that makes for quite a good power to weight ratio. Now it's not light tank speed, but still it's quite good. And as this tank is mounted on the chassis of the T-34-85, I think, that's really, really good. So you will be very maneuverable for a tank destroyer. Also, you get a top speed limit of 50 kph, that's really fast. I mean, your power to weight ratio is good, but usually you will be cruising at about 40, between 30 and 40 kph, but going downhill, you will be really, really quick. And even on flat ground or going up a hill, this tank is still very speedy. It's definitely one of the most maneuverable tank stories in the game. The traverse speed is an amazing 36 degrees per second, and the whole traverse is one of the most important stats on a tank destroyer and with 36 degrees per second it will be very difficult for enemies to circle you especially medium and light tanks will have difficulties when they're trying to carousel you because you can just turn your hull really really quickly and that's really important next we'll talk about the armor and yeah the armor is not very good actually it's 75 millimeters at the front and yeah that's not a lot it's angled quite well so if you angle your entire hull about like this you will be able to bounce the occasional shot but generally the angle is not insane and with 75 millimeters of armor at tier 6 most enemies will be able to penetrate you even if they're lower tier than you and yeah that's that is one of the major issues with this tank or actually in my opinion the only issue with this tank the very bad armor the side armor is 45 degree uh, is only 45 millimeters and the rear also 45 that doesn't really allow for that much angling maybe you can angle it about like this but generally yeah you have to be very careful when angling this tank and even if angled the armor does not count for that much next we'll come to talk about the guns and the gun selection of this tank is actually very interesting because first of all you start off with this gun here which is the top gun on the su-85 and it's an all right grind you know it could be a lot worse but the guns you really want to be using on this vehicle are either the 100mm gun or the 122mm gun and both of these guns are quite good and it's really hard to say which of them is the better gun although I've personally made my choice now the 100mm gun has got the a lot faster rate of fire, the rate of fire is nearly twice as high as on the 122mm as is to be expected and that really gives you quite an advantage because it means that you can in very many situations put two shots into an enemy rather than only one. Also if you're for example defending a clutch, uh, also if you're for example defending a choke point against several enemy vehicles, the fact that you'll be able to pump out 
those shots a lot quicker with a 100mm gun will give you some more versatility and I think that's one of the major issues with a 12cm gun. The penetration is exactly the same with AP ammo, however the 100mm gun gets better APCR ammunition penetration but the HE rounds are higher penning with the 122mm gun. Now the differences aren't huge but still they are there and I personally think that at tier 6 APCR ammo is a lot more important than HE ammo because realistically in a tier 6 match yeah, HE ammo you won't be loading it that often because there aren't that many targets that have got 60mm of armor at tier 6. So, yeah, I think the penetration values are more useful on the 100mm gun. Also, the faster rate of fire means that you can change shell types more effectively in the 100mm gun than in the 122 because this gun here takes about 12 seconds to reload, which is quite wild. The alpha damage, however, is way better on the 122mm gun, which gets a whopping 390 hit points of damage. That's just really, really massive. That's the highest alpha damage of any gun at tier 6 except for artillery. That is really, really impressive. And that is the only thing that this gun here actually has got over 100mm. The 100mm only gets 250 damage. Now, don't get me wrong at this point because 250 damage is still really, really impressive and can really hurt enemies. And at tier 6, that's still a lot of alpha. And the fact that your rate of fire is better means that you get better DPM with a 100mm gun. The fact that the 122mm gun, however, gets this 390 alpha damage means that at tier 6 you will for example be able to one shot T50s and in tier 6 games you will have a massive impact. That's the same alpha damage as for KV1S and that is just really impressive. The accuracy is quite bad on both guns actually, it's 0.4 on the 100mm which is slightly better than the 0.43 on the 122mm but still the accuracy on both guns is quite disappointing actually and coupled with the fact that this tank's got quite bad armour mean that the gameplay style in this vehicle is quite difficult to make out but I'll come to that when we talk about tactics. The last stat that we've got left over is the aiming time which is a lot better on the 100mm gun. 2.3 is quite good actually while 2.9 is quite disappointing. Now this gun is basically exactly the same gun as we've got on the KV-1S however it's got improved stats for example better rate of fire, better accuracy and better aim time. Still I think that this gun here has got somewhat of a random nature and I prefer the 100mm gun as I've, I've been playing the tank with both guns and up to now I've only been able to have one good battle with this gun here while with the 100mm gun I've been performing a lot better across the board so for me the 100mm is the best choice but if you really favour alpha damage you are free to choose the 122mm gun but the thing is that the 122mm gun is worse in every respect except for alpha damage and penetration and the penetration is exactly the same as on the 100mm so yeah for me the choice is the 100mm we will quickly also compare the DPM of the two guns so the DPM with the 122mm is 1828 which is actually not all that good and with the 100mm the DPM is 1948 which is it's not that much better actually but still it's a difference and yeah I prefer the 100mm as I pointed out. The gun traverse is 44 degrees per second, now uh, gun traverse is not that important really but it's still quite speedy and the traverse arc is, it's, it's actually quite small, it's about, you, you can traverse your gun about this far, you will see it in the gameplay later on. It's, it's alright, it could be worse but it could be a lot better too and for me that's another reason why I don't really like the 122mm because the fact that you have to for example turn your hole uh, a lot more often because of your quite small gun traverse arc and then have to aim 2.9 seconds before you can fire your gun really really kills for 122 for me along with the reload time and bad accuracy. 
The view range is quite underwhelming actually at tier 6 to 350 meters is not all that good. I mean it's acceptable, it's not as bad as the view range of the SU-85 which was just ridiculous really, uh, but it's still not very good. The average view range at tier 6 is 360, so you will be at a bit of a disadvantage in a 1-1 situation for example. The signal range is also not very good with 525. It's, I mean it's alright but at tier 6 Six, that's actually quite disappointing as many tier 6 tanks already get tier 10 radios. So what tactics should you apply in this vehicle here? As I already said, tactics are very very difficult to make out because the fact that both guns have got very bad accuracy and that this tank gets quite bad armor mean that you can't really play it as a sniper because of the lacking accuracy but you can't play it as a frontline assault vehicle because of the bad armor. And for me, that means that you have to play this tank with both guns out of the second line, firing a shot and then taking cover behind buildings or allied heavy or medium tanks, because you really cannot take hits. But after three shots taken, you will go down in this vehicle. Uh, and with only 75mm of armor, you will not really ricochet. So, yeah, you have to be careful. And that's for me the way you have to play this vehicle. Now, with the 100mm gun, this tank becomes a bit more versatile because you can fire from further back because accuracy is a bit better, the aiming time is a lot better. And with the 100mm, you can use this more as a DPM machine and you really have to make sure that you get lots of shots in because you do not have that massive alpha damage of the 122mm. But the good penetration means that you usually don't have to aim for weak spots, that means that with your bad accuracy it will be enough to just put your reticle over the center of mass of the enemy vehicle and just pull the trigger and usually you will hit and penetrate. This tank feels at home at 200 meters range or less because after that the lack of accuracy really really starts to become noticeable. As for equipment I would definitely mount vents because yeah this tank's a tank destroyer and tank destroyers generally like vents. Also the gun ram is really important with both guns but especially when you're using the 122mm gun. And for third piece of equipment you can basically choose between uh, a camo net or the enhanced gun lane drive. I took the camo net as the only piece of equipment because it's cheap but really the camo net doesn't give you that much benefit because this tank has just not got the accuracy to stay in the rear and snipe so camo net's a bit of a waste on this vehicle really and I would definitely go for the setup, improved vents, the gun rammer and the GLD. The GLD is especially important if you're using the 122mm gun. Crew skills. I went for camouflage of the entire crew, however when this reaches 100% I'm going to retrain it for brothers in arms and after that I'll retrain repairs because I just feel that camouflage of this tank is not all that good really because just you do not find yourself in the rear usually just because this tank does not excel at sniping and if you are sniping you're doing something quite wrong actually so especially if you're using the 122mm gun go for repairs rather than camouflage because getting tracked in a tank destroyer is just horrible and then after that you should swap it for vents and get repairs again and then get six cents on the commander definitely. Also stuff like Deadeye would be quite useful uh, for your gunner for example in tank destroyers. Uh, yeah that's basically it for crew skills, equipment and tactics and stuff and I hope I can give you a bit of an overview. So after I've been waffling on now in the garage that's head out to the battlefield to see how this tank performs in real. So our first game for today is on Mountain Pass. And this game I played with the 100mm gun, as I usually use the 100mm gun in this tank. And uh, yeah, it is a tier 6 game, which is really nice, because in tier 6 with the 100mm gun, or also with 122mm gun, your quite high alpha damage can really impact the game and take a third of the health of nearly any tank away on the enemy team, which is really nice. So what you see me doing here is... I'm heading over to the right side here, uh, to this kind of bridge to guard it, because I can see that no, none of my teammates are really going over here. 
and this is quite a nice spot for the SU100 actually because it's one of his choke points where with a 100mm gun you can really really hold back the enemy nicely because of your high rate of fire and good alpha damage and if enemies try to approach along this bridge here I would just hammer them with shots at least that's my plan so let's see if it works out the enemy team no actually our team uses a T46 which is a shame but you know it's a T46 Actually, that guy's quite unlucky because uh, you see me firing a random shot there because uh, that's a spot where often enemy tanks are. So I'm just firing. I mean, you could argue that I'm kind of giving my position away, but yeah, I'm. I, I mean, at this point, I know that there's nobody there really because uh, my shot. So if if you see this kind of um, this dirt being whipped up by a shot, uh, then you know that no that it hasn't hit anything. Because if it hits, you just don't see anything. Now, what I was saying is that T46 is quite unlucky because he platooned up with a Mat Matilda. And uh, the Matilda just got into its worst possible matchup, which is a tier 6 game. So that shot kind of goes to the left a bit. And that's, for one part, it's a result of my bad aiming because I jerked to the left a bit. But it's also the fault of this really bad accuracy in these guns. So my second shot goes in and that just shows you, even with 100mm gun, this tank here has got fearful alpha damage. And I realise that there's probably nobody on this bridge here guarding it. And that brings me into a really good position because I can just really snipe down these guys here when they try to progress towards my allies. And here, you, this is the kind of situation in which you really want to be using the 100mm gun. If I was using the 122mm gun, I would not be able to pump out these shots quite as effectively, and I would not have the same DPM, and also my, many of my shots wouldn't hit because of the worse accuracy. And the aiming time would be also bothersome. So at these kind of ranges, you really want to be using the... Uh, 100 millimeter gun and that's the kind of thing you can never really know in what kind of situations you will come in random battles and yeah i think in platoons of se 100s it's more useful to use 122 millimeter gun because three se 100s with a 390 millimeter gun each can basically pose a really big threat even to tier 8 tanks so yeah that's that's another thing, but generally, if you're playing on your own, I think the 100mm gun is a bit better because it gives you more versatility. And the fact that it reloads faster means that you just cannot be... Enemies can't take advantage of your reload time as well. And if you're in a platoon, for example, even if you have to reload 12 seconds, you've still got your platoon mates to cover you, so it's a lot less of a risk. So I just picked up my third kill on that SU-85, and while the Matilda's advancing to the enemy base, I realised that it's the best thing to do to fall back now and defend my own base, because the SU-100, I mean, uh, not that, I'm, I'm not sure what I was talking about there, sorry. Anyway, I can see that... Uh, Many of my teammates are progressing from the west. No, that's the east, sorry. So all those heavy tanks at A5 and A4 now uh, are progressing towards the enemy base. So I realised that I would be quite unnecessary over there and actually unneeded. So I realised that I can help my team a lot more by falling back and defending my own base. Because at the moment I'm the only person there actually. Oh, oh there's a, uh, that was a really clutch shot. It was really lucky that that one took out the KV-1S. But I think he was not. Yeah he wasn't using the top gun. Or was he? No that, that's not the best gun. So that was lucky for me. Uh, that's actually. I think that's the T-34's gun he was using. So yeah. Per KV-1S there. The KV-1S is a horrible stock grind. It's only really fun when once you unlock that one two two millimeter gun, then it really kicks ass. So my team is just capping away there, and I'm I'm not sure this. I think most of my enemies are heading back towards the base, so I don't think there are any enemies here that I could encounter. However, I can still snipe some enemies from over here, maybe, or will we cap out before I can? Let's see, let's see, come on, no, I think, it, yeah, okay, that was it, I think, so, oh, can we, no, okay, the game's finished, but anyway, uh, I hope that kind of showcased 100mm gun for you, and let's quickly check out the after game stats to see what exactly we achieved. So, I got 138,166 credits, I think that's a bit ridiculous, I think it's some kind of special, let's quickly see, 
It doesn't say, but it's, it's, I'm quite sure it's a special. I don't, you don't usually get that much credits for that kind of game. And we picked up 4,143 experience, but that was for a triple, for the first victory of the day. We picked up our second class mastery badge, and we can see that we finished off best of the entire team with a 300 experience uh, jump to the next guy, which was for 88, and we dealt out the most damage as well, and got the most kills. In the detailed report, we can see that we fired 16 shots, of which 13 hit, and all 13 penned, doing 2,241 damage, which is really nice, at tier 6. And uh, with the 122mm gun, that probably would not have been possible in the kind of situations we got into, which were mostly mid to long range engagements. Uh, we received 6 hits, of which all 6 penetrated, doing 650 damage. Mm, yeah, that was quite lucky, probably some somebody was shooting at us with a low calibre gun, the Matilda probably or something like that, and once it was the KV-1S2. So we received, we detected two enemies, which is actually quite impressive with our bad view range. Damaged seven, destroyed four, and also picked up 62 spotting damage, which is kind of a nice bonus. Yeah, so I hope that game kind of showed the 100mm gun and what it's good for, and maybe its weaknesses as well. For example, that we would maybe have been able to one-shot the Matilda with a 122mm gun there. So, speaking of the 122mm gun, to give you the full picture, we'll now head out and have another game in the SC100, this time with a 122mm. So, this is the second game that I promised in the SC100 with a 122mm gun, and actually I played this game just a few hours hours ago because I was desperately trying to uh, get some content that was worth showing to you using the 122mm because uh, yeah I've been playing this tank for the last week with the 122mm gun trying to get a good game in and I've not exclusively playing this, been playing this tank, I've also been playing other vehicles obviously uh, but still I have not had a single game worth showing you with the 122mm and uh, yeah, that just shows how bad the 122mm performs, in my opinion. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong, I'm not sure. But for me, the 122mm just is too trollish and too random, really. Because with the 100mm, you've just got more flexibility, more accuracy, better aiming time and better reload time. And basically, the only thing that 100mm has over the 100 uh, No, wrong way around, the only thing that 122mm has got over 100mm is for better alpha damage. Now I'm not quite sure what this Cromwell is doing, but uh, yeah, the El Halouf is not a good map for this tank really, especially with a 122mm gun, because it's too inaccurate to do effective sniping, and the gun depression is so bad that most aggressive tactics in this tank are quite useless with this vehicle too. So, or did I just say most tactics in this tank? I meant in on this map, not in this tank. So, yeah. However, in this game, things pan out quite well because our team manages to push through really quickly. And so I'm advancing up the enemy slope here. And I've got quite a bit of medium backup. And this really shows how, uh, how fast the SC100 is. And I'm just basically joining the medium wolf pack here, which is really nice. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that obviously 122mm gun weighs a lot more than the 100mm gun and creates a worse power to weight ratio. And oh, hello Mr. Tog! The Tog here is an ideal target for the 122mm gun because he's big, he's got no armour, and yeah, that's just really nice. Still right there, you could see this gun missing. And yeah, he gets killed just before I can finish him off. And the really bad aim time just there meant that I pulled the trigger before the gun was fully aimed and that made me miss my target, which was a shame, but yeah, that's just what happened with the 122mm gun. So there's a Churchill 7 up ahead now, and what you see me do here now is I auto-aim at the Churchill 7, and that's quite a useful tactic I find because once I turn this corner, my reticle will straight away move over Churchill 7, and that means I'll aim a bit quicker. I won't aim quicker, but I'll start aiming earlier, and that's quite useful. Now, I was tunnel-visioning a bit there, allowing that Cromwell to get round. 
but still I'm going to prioritise and I can't believe the RNG, I literally bounce off the side of a Churchill 7, That's I can't believe it, that's really really tough. Anyway, the score's 82 so our team's just basically tearing the enemies to shreds and there's a Churchill 1 up ahead and an 82. Okay, here we go. Yes. Oh, it's actually a Churchill 7. It's quite a tough nut to crack, even for my 122mm gun. So I'm going for the lower glaciers here. I could also go for Cromwell, but uh, right now I just really want to focus down with Churchill 7 as it's on very low health and it's got the most dangerous gun of my opponent at the moment. The Churchill gun carry is also quite dangerous, but now I'm going to go for Cromwell. And that was very lucky because I didn't aim at all. That was an absolute clutch shot. And I have to be very careful because I'm on very, very low health here. And I'm basically using this T-34-85 as a meat shield. The Cromwell bounces off me and rams himself to death by um, driving into the T-34-85. And now I'm going to go for the 82. I could one-shot him with an above-average roll. And aim, aim, and... No, that was a low roll, but still we took most of his health off. And that just shows you the pure brutality of this gun. And reloading. You can see the quite long reloading time of this gun here. And now there's only the Crusader left. And we've got a fairly good idea where he is. He's going to be somewhere behind that hill up ahead. So, yeah, here again the good speed if the SU comes into play. I mean, it's as I said, the top speed is 50, but we're cruising at between 30 and 40. But still, we're one of the first tanks into the combat zone, which is really nice. And this really helps if you have to, uh, if you have to clean up at the end of the game. By the way, what I failed to mention, this is this was one of the new confrontation game mode games. So uh, this is only Russians against only British, which is quite interesting. Apparently, the Russians are superior. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it was just the competence of our players, probably. And he doesn't seem to be here, so, uh, yeah, where can he be? I mean, I think he might be just behind this little uh, outcrop of rock here. And, yes, there he is. Come on, can we... Oh, that was such a nice, beautiful high roll. That was just really lucky that we rolled for 410 there, knocking out the Crusader. I was really glad to one-shot him there, because I, I really did not want to be exposed to his fire. And it was really lucky that we hit that shot, too, because it was fairly clutch. But, uh, yeah, this was the best game I had ever in my SC100 with a 122mm gun. And that's where you check out the after-game stats to see how good exactly it was. So, we managed to pick up 40,714 credits and 1,510 experience. Also, this game was good enough to get us our first class mastery badge in the SC100, which I was very glad to pick up. And... In the team, we only came second best after the T-34-85, who got a bit more experience than us. However, we managed to deal out the most damage, and we only got one kill, but kills aren't that important anyway, at least not for the experience score. We only fired nine shots, of which seven hit, and only six penetrated, which allowed us to do 1,952 damage, and that's really the beauty of a 122mm gun, that with only 6 shots we were able to deal out nearly 2,000 damage, and that is really nice. Now with a 100mm gun, that probably would have taken us something like 10 shots to do exactly the same performance, and that is the only aspect in which I think the 122mm excels over the 100mm gun. We received 7 hits, of which 4 penetrated and 3 didn't, which is actually quite surprising because yeah, our armour is not that good, but mostly those shots were from tanks like the Cromwell for example, which have not got that good penetration in the first place. We received 910 potential damage, which is quite a lot actually in this tank. And we damaged five enemies, which is a lot, destroyed only one, 
and also picked up 600 spotting damage, which is nice. And we traveled 2.3 clicks, which is quite a distance. So yeah, that was kind of this review of this tank, and I must say the SC100 was a joy to play. I don't like the 122mm gun, as I already said, but with the 100mm gun, it was a pleasure to play through, and I can really recommend that vehicle. It's it's difficult to master because of a combination of bad accuracy and long aiming time, and bad armor. But once you get the hang of it, it's very nice to drive. The guns are extremely deadly, and yeah, I it's just a really really nice experience. And the fact that you can customize it with 122 mm gun over 100 mm gun really makes it uh, very refreshing. And you can always change between the two guns if you get bored with one of them. So I hope this review gave you a good overview of the tank. And if it did, consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I hope I see you. Out there on the battlefield or in one of my next videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching as usual and bye bye.